Hi guys! In today's video I'll be showing you how to make this stylized glass effect in Shittograph. To create the effect we'll be using light direction, view direction and freshness. As always there is a link in the description that contains the Shadograph file and the text tutorial for this effect. Let's get started. So here we are with the testing objects that currently have the standard transparent shader on them. Uh, they also have my fake liquid shader inside of them. Uh, if you want this shader, uh, the link is in the description to the post that explains it. So the standard shader is fine for realistic objects, but I want something more cartoony. So let's start by creating a new shader graph. Go to create shader and we'll be using the PBR graph. Okay, and right away I'm going to create a material from this. So right click on the shader and go to create material. And I'm going to drag it onto all of my objects. Now open up the graph. And the first thing we'll be doing is adding in the light direction. At the point of making this video, there is no node just for the light direction. So we're going to have to use a custom function node. And this node lets us write a bit of code to add in some functions that are missing in Shadograph. So click on the settings and then set the type to string and we will be outputting a direction. So set it up to a vector three called direction. Add in a name for the function. And then for the body, we're going to start off with if shadograph preview so that while looking at the previews, we can actually see something. So while looking at the preview, we are outputting direction as 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0. Else we're going to grab the light from the scene using get main light. And then output the direction to be light.direction. And then end with an end if. Now drag the result of this into the albedo and save. And when we go back to the scene, it should change color when I rotate the light. And it does. So we know we're getting the right values through. In order to turn the light direction into a gradient over the meshes, we're going to use a dot product. And for the B input, we'll be using the object normals. And when we output this, uh, I'm going to put it into emission so the object shadows won't get in the way. And turn the main color into black and actually turn the smoothness to zero as well. And save this. Now you can see even without having any lighting turned on, the gradient moves with the light direction. But if we move around the object, you can see that it's very static and I'd like to add a bit more movement to it. So I'm going to take the light direction and subtract the view direction from it. And make sure the view direction is set to object as well. And then put this into the dot product. Save it. So it still moves with the light direction, but you can also see that it's a bit more dynamic because of the subtracted view direction. Now to turn this from a gradient to a sharper effect, we're going to run this result through a smooth step. It will be the in input. And as a quick test, if I set this one to 0 0.5 and this to 0 0.5, 55 and drag this to the emission slot you can see in the preview 
that it's a much sharper result. There's no longer a gradient there. But we'd want this to be controllable from the material settings, so we're going to add two new vector ones. One for the light specular cutoff. And set it to a slider with default 0 0.5. And then another one for the smoothness. And again, make it a slider and set the default to something small. Now drag the main cutoff value and put it in edge one. And then because the, the edge two should always be a little bit bigger, we're going to add the smoothness to this cutoff point. And drag the smoothness in, add it and put it to edge two. save and now in the material settings we can choose where the cutoff starts so if you set it to zero it'll be very crisp again and then the higher this value is the smoother it'll get so that's step one um, let's now add in the view specular it's going to clean this up a little bit And we basically have to do the exact same thing, only this time only using the view direction and adding new values for the smooth steps so we can customize it. So just grab the whole bunch of nodes and paste it and then delete the subtract node and drag in the view direction into the top slot of the dot product and then replace the light specular cutoff with one for the view direction. The uh, smoothness, you probably want it to be the same between the two specular effects, so just keep the same one there. I'll make a new one for the view spec. And attach it. As a quick test, just output this instead of the light direction one save. And 0.5 is a little bit too low for the view spec so bring that up a bit and now when you rotate it you can see that there's a nice specular effect for the view direction. Next up we're going to add some color to both specular effects so add both of them together. Add in a new color property for the specular color and make sure the default is set to something which isn't 0% opacity because otherwise you won't see it. Drag it in here and multiply it with the specular result. We're now going to add the first Fresnel effect. Create node Fresnel. Create a new vector one property for the rim power. Attach it to the power. Just like before, we're using a smooth step node. Only this time we're going to keep the edge one at 0 0.5 because we're already sort of controlling the size with uh, the rim power property. And then for the second edge, we're going to create an add node uh, set to 0 0.5. And then we're going to add a new property for the smoothness again. So this will be the outer rim smoothness. And add it to the 0 0.5 and that will be edge 2. And now we're just going to add um, the option to color it. So multiply with a new color property, which will be like a rim color. Again, make sure it's not uh, zero opacity and not completely black. 
To make the preview work, uh, select the rim power and set it to a slider between 1 and 20. And now we can see the result here. So let's plug this into the emission to test it. And now we have this rim light effect. Uh, we can control the smoothness and we can control the size. And now we want to do this again, but inverted. So we have sort of a nice glow at the center. It'll look very similar to the view specular, but the controls are a little different and, and it sort of adds another layer, a bit of depth to the effect. So let's group this all together for the outer rim. We're going to copy all of these notes for the inner glow. And create a new rim power property for this inner glow. Invert it with a one minus node. And invert the values here, so instead of edge 1 being 0 0.5, uh, edge 2 will be 0 0.5. And edge 1 will be 0 0.5 subtracted by a new property called inner rim smoothness. And add a new color property to control the color of the inner glow. And output this. Actually, the inner rim power should probably be allowed to go to zero. There we go. And now all we have to do is add everything together and add in another color property to tint the whole glass piece. Saturate it just in case to keep the values clamped. And now the only thing we need to add is transparency. So go to your PBR master and set the surface from opaque to transparent. Now we need to populate the alpha. So split the color from the alpha by using a split node. Um, reconstruct the RGB in a factor 3 and this will be the emission and the albedo and then the alpha will go into alpha uh, it doesn't look transparent yet because we're adding a full alpha to it so let's make this a bit lower And tweak the settings a little bit. So there's one more step we can take um, to add sort of like a tune ramp effect over everything. So let's do that. So we're going to take the light direction again and create another dot product, the world vector. It's the world normal vector. And smooth step it. 
using uh, 0 0.5 and 0 0.55 and multiply it with the tint before we add it to everything. And now the main tint is sort of like a tune ramp over everything, which I think looks nice. And that's the setup for this shader. So thank you for watching. All the resources are linked in the description. And I'll see you in the next video. If you want to see more tutorials, I have a website where all of them are listed. And there are a lot of them by now. Uh, the link is in the description, so be sure to check it out.